Good afternoon, you guys. It's so exciting to be able to do another devotion with you. Um, today we're going to be in the book of Joshua. We are going to be in the book of Joshua today. Once again, I am Lakeisha Martin because I'm getting a lot of new viewers. And I'm going to make sure that I say my name every single time. So we are going to be in Joshua today in the Old Testament. Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8. Now, while you're trying to find this, I'll give you a little background. The Israelites um, have um, went to battle against AI and the, against AI's boys. And um, they had some sin in the camp. And they had to get rid of the sin because they could not. God said that they were, he was going to do for them. They would win against AI and his boys or AI's boys and the king. They would win and they didn't. They lost and they was trying to figure out what happened. And there was sin in the camp because one of um, the people from the tribe of Judah had taken what belonged to the Lord. So once he was dealt with, stoned, and then cut on, and cast on fire, then they were able to go back, you know, and win. Um, now, now after they've won, and whenever God gives them a victory, they are to build an altar. They are to remember, you know, what God has done with us. Every time there's a victory... There should be an altar. There has to be something that is built for us to remember what God has done. You know, each time he had done something, they would build an altar. They would remember and they were to tell their children and people from generations and generations to come. So now at the end of this chapter is what I want to focus on. You should be there by now. John, John, Joshua chapter 8. I'm so used to being in John. So Joshua chapter 8. And we're going to be starting at verse 30. So, then Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, on Mount Ebal. He followed the instructions that Moses, the Lord's servant, had written in the book of the law. Make, the instructions was, make me an altar from stones that are uncut and have not been shaped with iron tools. Then on the altar they presented burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. The part I want to focus on is make me an altar from stones that are uncut and have not been shaped with iron tools. Many times we think of altar and we look at altar and we think what? First time I think about altar I think of you know, something with some candles on it. You know, um, a lot of my Mexican brothers and sisters may have their Santa Maria on there. Um, they may have, you know, andal, uh, and, um, andals, angels. They may have, you know, like little figurines. You know, there may there is something that, you know, they have built an altar with. Or you may not even think of it the Christian way or the Catholic way, you may think of an altar, you know, with um, bells and different things that people have put together, or sometimes people make an altar to like a shrine, you know, a like of, you know, this is my, you know, person that they worship, whatever they're doing, but if we think about altar in the Christian way, we think about altar like problems, like bring your all to the altar. I am tripping y'all. I did not even pray. <laughs> oh wait a minute. Let's go back. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, Lord, I just got so far, got so quick into it that I did not take the time to address you. I cannot do this on my own. I knew I felt something wrong and I needed to hear your words because I could not do this on my own and I kept stumbling. I'm like something is wrong here. And I did not ask for your grace and mercy. I did not ask for your teaching. So, Lord, forgive me for that, Lord God. I'm trying to go right into it because I was so excited about your word, Lord God. 
So, Lord, now I'm asking, Lord God, that you sit down with us at the altars of our hearts, Lord God. Lord God, and break bread with us, Lord God. Show us what you want us to know, Lord God, what you want us to see in this word, Lord God. Lord, open up your word like a curtain before us. Let it blind our natural eyes so our spirit can see that the heart of you is open. Feed and nourish us, God. Open up your word like a curtain before us, Lord God. Teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry. So now, altar. So what is God? what did God say here? God, I mean, the uh, written in the book of the law, which are still God's words because this whole book is God breathed. Okay, so make me an altar from stones that are uncut. Okay, now. If you think about make me an altar, okay, so he wants a place to be made for him. These stones are the scriptures. These are what we build on when things happen. Now, with the Israelites, they was in a battle. They That was some battle that was on their journey, you know, and he said that he would be with us always. He would always be with us and that he would lead and guide us. So then we got to think of, Standing on his word. Each time God bought the Israelites through something, there was some type of building of an altar. There were some stones that had to be a part of it. I mean, we're thinking about when they came out of the Jordan and they took out those 12 stones and built the altar. Or, you know, when sin is there, they stone the sin out. They stone the sin out with the word of God. You, We can't think of it because when you first read that, you think of that uh, uh, God stoning somebody or having the people stone them to get the sin out of the camp. You're thinking literally like, oh, that is just sad. But we just cannot think of it that way. I watched an episode last night of, um, uh, not Bizarre ER, but um, Trauma in the ER. And there was a man that was just mangled. Mangled hand, just body. He knew there was going to be multiple amputations. He said he cannot go into that situation and look like oh my god this is grossing me out or let that alter his thinking he had to go ahead with his job many times we can't allow things to alter our thinking either you know god wanted the children of israel to stone these people to death because of they knew what they were supposed to do and they didn't do it therefore they were stoned okay god gives us an assignment with the word, the stone of the word, and he says we are supposed to live as examples with this word. We are supposed to preach it and teach it and stand on it. We're supposed to take these words and stand on it, not just, you know, uh, we going to stand on this one or stand on that one. We got to stand on the stone of this word. So when God took those Israelites through something, every time there will be a stone, a stone for something. So in us, we have to take the stones out of these scriptures. Every time we're in battle, we have to take the stones out because they stood on the stones. The stone was the word. The stone was God's word. What he told them. He told them that I'll be with you. He told them I'll deliver AI into your hands. He told them that. So they stood on it and they went on faith and they went. He tells us that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a fat stone to be able to stand on. To know that no matter what happens, he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. Another stone, that he hears all, he answers all, he, he hears it, he hears every prayer, he sees everything that we're doing. Those are stones to know that we are never alone. When, when he feels like we're alone and nobody's, he is always looking, he is always waiting. He's always just in the, he's just kind of like waiting in the shadows. He's just waiting, you know, looking at what's going on. You know, he is just there. These are stones that we are to stand on. Okay, so we got all these stones. Okay, and these stones built an altar. Now, I like how he's, now we're going to get into what he's talking about. He said, make me an altar from stones that are uncut. Okay, so if you think about a stone, when he's saying uncut, a stone that is not already shaped is what he's saying. Okay, this word this Bible is uncut stones, okay? They are. They have been shaped by people. 
because of what they've been through with God. So when they go through something, they're shaping that stone. So this is what God showed me with this scripture. Boom. Shaping a stone. It's kind of like, you know, when you go to like a art festival or something like that and you see the people sitting in the chairs and then you see like a clay artist. They just take a piece of clay and they begin to mold that person everything they see their lines you know their nose their eyes the shape of it and they take such passion but it starts with a piece of clay okay the scriptures are clay they're pieces of clay when we're children they are nothing but clay okay we are um sorry that was my phone we are this clay is what we've been taught okay our mind just say is a piece of clay we go to church and we begin to learn things. We begin to learn different scriptures. You know, Genesis 1 and 1. Okay, we begin to learn that. John 3, 16. We begin to, these are different pieces of clay that have been put on the inside of us. Okay? We're not really understanding what they mean. We just are committing them to memory at this point. Okay, then the older you get, you start going to Bible study. You start going to Sunday school. And people begin to break down. You know, you start hearing the preacher preach. People, this is people cutting these stones that you already have on the inside of you this is what this show them you know how preachers and you'll hear them kind of preach on you know uh um the woman with the issue of blood or you know the blind man this is what god has showed them and so now they're cutting a stone to give to us now that is religion because that's good for us to give give us those stones but many people are building an altar for God with these uh, with these stones that are already cut. And in this word, he's telling us to come with uncut stones. This is what makes the relationship. You got to think about, it, okay, because if I have all these scriptures on the inside of me, and when I came to him to come in relationship, God wanted me to, I wanted my desire. So I know it was from God because this Bible says, I will give you the desires of your heart. If you delight in me, I delighted in him. I wanted to know about him. Therefore, he started give, giving me the desires of my heart. And one of the desires was to rid myself of everything I've known who God was. Rid myself of what, how I'm supposed to act, how I'm supposed to do. Because these are also stones that many Christians are standing on. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to have this. When you start to be a preacher, you don't know how to, you do it this way. And you know, they're giving you their cut stones of how they did it. When God is saying, make, I want you to have uncut stones when you come unto me. I don't want you to know anything about anything. It's like, you know, when you come into a class and they say, whatever you've been taught, empty it out. Just don't even have it because I'm unable to teach you if you already have it in your mind on what it's supposed to be. God is the same way in a relationship with him. If you already have him in your mind, you already have that cut stone of what it's supposed to be. You've already heard the scriptures being said, just say a same scripture every single time and everybody just says it the same exact way. You already have that scripture cut in your mind. God is saying he don't want no cut stones. He wants you to come to him just basically raw, just raw, just that uncut stone, just that stone. It's not been cut. It's not, not been tampered with anything. When I came in a relationship, I got all that out of me, and I allowed him to start at the beginning in Genesis 1 and 1, and then he began to cut the stones of his word. When he was cutting the stones, that shows that when you think about, and what I'm seeing in my mind, the image now is like, you know, like a, you know, they put that big torch thing over their head, and they start touching, and you see all the stuff, you know, flying, you know, see all the debris or whatever part of that, you know, whatever they're working on flying. You know, to get rid of it, to cut into because they're taken away. And that's how it seemed in the relationship with God. He's taken away everything that was on the surface. And he's now going to work on cutting the stone. He's going to get on the inside of the stone now, which is on the inside of our hearts. Many times our hearts have already been cut to what Christianity looks like. You know, our hearts and our minds have been cut. You know, this is what Christians look like. I don't want to be that. Or I don't want to be, I think it's something deeper than that. It is. It is something deeper than what we normally see on a regular basis. It's way bigger than what we have been taught. It's way bigger than just what it looks like. It, it just goes so deep. Okay, so he's cutting these stones 
on the inside of us, and these stones are his word. He's given us relationship. Now he's cutting them to fit us because we are unique. The word that he puts in us is an is is unique. If he if we allow him to use us, it would be everybody would have a unique word. And you wouldn't have um pastors and teachers and you know ministers all ministering, pastoring and teaching the same way. You wouldn't have the same, you know, jumping around. You wouldn't have the same, you know, the uh, and the hollering and Everybody wouldn't do that the same way when they're preaching. Everybody wouldn't shout. Everybody wouldn't holler. They would have their own preaching style. They would have their own teaching style. They would have their own way of how God showed them the scriptures. If God was really, really using, really, really you're in relationship and really allow God to teach and preach through you, it would, everybody would be totally different. It would start like as a line of people. And you allowed that line. And if everybody, you gave that scripture to everybody. And you put all of them in one room. But we could see everybody in each room. And they would ask, you know, let them start. And see, the beginning may be different. But it's going to be like, um, the beginning may be different. But it's going to be to where... It goes a whole nother way. But many times what's happening is everybody's the same way. They're explaining the scripture the same way. They may throw a little, you know, of their stuff in it. And when I say their stuff, meaning their analogy of, you know, or something that's done happened in their life to kind of throw that in. But they're still breaking down the scripture the same way. That's what I mean. But what God wants to do is he wants to restructure that. He wants to take all that out because this is what you've taught. And I really, this is what you've been taught. And I'm really not able to teach you the way I want to. Just say, kind of like, you know, going to get your degrees, your master's in theology. And, you know, you're going to get these fancy degrees and things, you know, in, you know, Bible, Christianity, you know, theology to learn. Those are cut, are um, cut stones because they've already they're showing you what this means. They're showing you the way this if you this lined out like this and if it's italicizing. These are they're cutting the stones for you. God saying, "Make an altar unto me." He's just not just talking about just just a, pray, a praying altar where you leave everything to him. He's talking about I want to. This is your altar. This is what I've done. This is what I've seen. Now, even though they won that battle, going back to the scripture, many people seen different things in that battle. And the, all the stones are not going to be the same. They are going to be cut different ways. There will be no stone that's the same. So no scripture is supposed to be the same to each and every one of us individually. It's kind of like I watch the Kardashians sometimes. And... One of the two little girls was sitting at the table, and she's like, you know, their maid bought them their salad, and she's like, you know, this is not one of my faves, and, you know, this, that, and the other, and they were just very ungrateful, you know, going out, spending money on the credit cards, they didn't have no money, no business doing, just being ungrateful, just taking their lifestyle that they have, you know, the opportunities that they have, and taking it for granted, so their father took them to like a city union mission, and they really seen what it was like to be, you know, in po a poverty level. Or they really seen what it's like to not have all the things that they have. And they said it woke them up to be like, wow, you know, we're really fortunate to have those things. Well, it's kind of like with Christianity. We are rich. And we just look at the richness of it. We are not looking at, we forgot about the poverty level. We've, we've, we've taken it for granted. And I'm going to show you why I'm saying this. Because you think Christian and you think richness. Because like the maid that came out and gave them, you know, finish your first course. So that shows me there's courses after this first course. Because that's what the daddy said on the Kardashian. There's courses after this first course of Christianity. We go in and we get, you know, our maids are bringing it to. Our maids are considered the pastors. Our maids are considered the teachers and the ministers. Our maids are considered these people. They are just bringing it to us instead of us going to cook it on our own. 
coming with raw meat unto God. Basically, we're raw meat. We're not coming to him like that. We're coming to him already cooked. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? We've already been cooked our whole lives with, this is what John 3.16 means. This is what, you know, the one with the issue of blood. This is what it means when they first got their first, you know, went to get, Jesus got their first disciple. All those, this is what Philippians 4.13 means. This is what Ephesians 3.20 means. All these scriptures that have been just embedded, embedded, embedded in us, you know, this is what, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good means. And this is what, so we're coming to him and giving our lives and we're still cut. We've already been cut and we've already been seasoned and we've already been cooked because we've allowed the pastors, the teachers, the ministers, our parents, you know, people in church. And it's not wrong, but God is just trying to bring this to the light right now. We've already been cooked and we're not uncut now. We've already, you know, we're not, we're, we, but when we come into that genuine relationship, when God really starts using, I can, you know, you think about those people that he really can use and you're like, man, I wish he could use me. The way. Many times, I'm not going to say all the time, but many times those people have came just raw. I'm coming to God just raw, uncut. I don't want anything. I want you every time I go into the word. Show me something different. Wow me with this scripture that I've never seen before. I, and that's exactly what he does. But like I'm going back to what I'm saying about being rich, they, they, they're the maids now. They're bringing it to us. You know, not even with them. You know, we're rich, you know, going out and buying new outfits like they did on the show. They went out and bought new outfits. We can go and buy new outfits because why? We can go to these conferences. We buy new outfits there because we got to pay fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty dollars sometimes to go and see these preachers come, and we're paying that at the conferences. So now we're buying new outfits to wear. I'm just got to keep it real. We buying the outfits, and we get to buy the outfits on the internet because now we can go on and watch it. These are good tools for people that have no idea. You know, that they go on and stumble up. I'm not saying that these are bad things, but we are misusing our riches. We are taking it for granted. God has, we are just prosperous in that way. He has made us rich that way, and we have taken it for granted. I know I have because I was just fed all the time. I was a very spoiled brat, and a lot of Christians are just spoiled brats because they know everything about the word. They've been in church for this long. Therefore, their head is way up here and way out here because they know everything. You can't tell them anything. And that's not what God intended. God intended for even him to always change something around to show you in a different way. That's why he keeps saying, that's why he's saying in here, make me an altar for some that are uncut and have not been shaped with iron tools. They've, they've not already been shaped. Bring me those stones. Bring me those people that have not been shaped, that have not been cut already. I want you to bring me those people. And while you at it, bring me yourself. I want you to just take all that, all everything that you've learned through somebody else because they built you now. Now you have Ezekiel talks about the stony heart. He wants to take out your stony heart. Because you built it on the stones, you done played Tetris with your heart, and you built these stones, and you put them in the right spot, and then in your eyes, you know how Tetris does, and it lights up like ding, 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 you know, that's a good line, and they fall and give you some other, that's what's happening, and this is, Tetris is not good in Christianity, so you build those, and tink, 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 it's lighting up in your eyes, and but you forget that they're all falling to make something else. You understand what I'm saying? They're all, so we don't want nothing to fall. They're falling because they're not given by God. They're given by somebody else. Think about it when you go to church and you say, oh, man, this was a good word. And you go out of church and you're so excited about it. You may be excited about that word all throughout the night. You may even wake up that next day and be excited about it. But then later, it's gone. Many people, the majority, I'm not going to say everybody, but their notes are gone. They don't know where they are last week's notes. And they can't remember what happened. Because it's what God showed them. We didn't allow God to speak to us on that Sunday. We didn't allow him to speak to us on it. We didn't allow him to marinate 
us with what he wanted to tell us that rhema word a lot of people say lord give us a rhema word basically they're saying lord give us a rhema stone that has been uncut this is what they're asking because they ask we ask them for that rhema word but we study so focused in on the pastor and what he's saying that we can't even open let our minds be open to what god is saying through him many times he's talking through them and we so busy, you know, we think of something else that we still looking at him. And we've missed the rhema word for us. And many times we get the rhema word, but it's not really a rhema word. It's a cut, un it's a stone that's already been cut. And we've added that on the inside of us. God doesn't want that. God is ready to shatter all the altars, all the things that we've built up because they've already been cut. They've already been They've already been, like, let me see what the scripture says. They've already been cut. They've already been shaped. That was the word I was looking for. They've already been shaped. Into, and God is not, God is wanting an openness. He's wanting for us to remove all that, all the stones, all what it looks like to be a Christian, all what we've been taught. We're not supposed to look like this. We're not supposed to dress like this. We're not supposed to eat this. You know, we ain't supposed to do this. We're not supposed to, whatever it is. Because many times with these stones, what we've created is a box. We've created all these stones and there's a box. It's kind of like the off commercial. You see the off and the off clip on. And they say when you clip it on, it goes all the way just around you. Like this thing is off from your head to your feet all the way just around you in this off. You know, where the mosquitoes can't get to you. Many times that's what our altars are looking like. We just got this altar box up. And so when God is wanting us to step out of the box, that's not what we're used to. That's not what we're used to seeing, you know, because we've already been shaped. We've already been, you know, cut. So it's like, uh-uh, we can't step out of the box. You know, we can't do nothing that's too wild or too crazy because now that's stepping out of the box. And remember, we got, we done built up this stone protection around this stone wall that has been cut into these shapes to fit just right all the way up and around us then we can't we can't get out you know with stone you ain't just gonna just push a piece of stone no you got to really work and get out but when god sees that you're ready to get out of that box of being shaped for years and years and years he'll knock that stone wall down just like he did the walls of jericho boom they'll just come tumbling down and he'll let you come out he'll let you come out and he'll let you just do your thing. You'll just feel like a new person. You'll have joy. You'll just, you know, you'll be like, what? I didn't know that scripture meant that. Y'all done do that so many times. Or God's done show me something. I've just been so excited. I've got on here and talked about it. I went on Facebook and talked about it. Because those are my ministry. You know, they, those are my ministries right now. You know, my ministry is online. You know, it's, you know, to where I can turn on and talk about it. And just, you know, be about it. And just boom, boom, boom like that. So, I encourage you today. To look at your stones. Look at what you've built on. Look at what the scriptures that you have on the inside of you. What do those scriptures mean? What do they mean to you? What Have you allowed God to take all the stones out and start all over? Many of y'all don't want to, many people don't want to start. I ain't going to say y'all. Because I was there too. You know, but I, I can't say that I didn't want to start over because I did. Once I seen that everything was cut and already shaped on the inside of me, it was an image I never even recognized because I didn't know who God was. So I was looking at a, uh, you know how you look at an image and it's just them been just mangled. I mean, it's just not mangled, but just so distorted that you can't even realize what it is. What is that? That was what God was because I've used these shapes. And they've been cut into this image of what he's supposed to look like. And it's everybody's stuff and all the preachers and all the teachers and all the Sunday schools and all the Bible studies and all this. And all of this just done got, it's like 80 colors thrown up against the wall and said, boom, there's God. Mm -mm. It's not. And it's just stones. It just looks like a mess. It's not until you wipe that wall. Right now I'm thinking of there's a commercial. About, it's a paint commercial. 
and the woman's like, I'm done with my side. And then she looks at the wall and there's just man that's still on. The man's like, don't paint me on the wall. And the husband's like, man, I just don't want to paint over this because it just talks to me. And she's like, uh-uh. She grabs the paint and just immediately starts painting over this man's face, you know, on the wall. Because it's, you know, they're, they're with this paint, they're, you know, trying to do something. That's exactly what God has been doing with the scriptures. He's then got out his paint and just started painting over everything. All my walls is all these scriptures upside down because I didn't understand them. They was broken. They was all different ways, you know, many times that I've tried to use the scriptures and they was all broken upside down. I just didn't even know what to do with them. They was just stones. It was just like rocks, a big bunch of rocks being thrown. And you don't know who threw it because there's too many people out and all you're seeing is rocks. So there's no way you can know who threw the rock. That's how it was. And it was just thrown all together. And I'm like, uh, that's why I was looking like, you know, who is it? You know, what am I looking at? I had to paint over it. I had to get rid of it all. And I had to allow God to do it. So again, I encourage you. Look at your stones. Look at what God wants to do with you. Really get into some serious prayer with him. And really just start looking at the scriptures again. Pray before you go into the Bible. Just don't pray just a regular prayer. Pray a prayer from your heart. Just see what God, how God wants you to pray. And look at the stones of his scripture. In Jesus name. Amen.